Hello and welcome to our new series on iOS app development using Swift. This series will provide you helpful tips and techniques for building apps. Let's get started with an introduction to how to use an auto layout. Let's start by creating a new iOS project. Let's choose a single view application and fill in the required project details. I'll keep the language as Swift as that's the technology we will be concentrating on in the upcoming tutorials. Universal makes it compatible in iPhone and iPad devices. That creates a clean slate view controller which we can start working on. Let's run the app and see how it looks initially. This tutorial does not tell you how to set the launcher screen, but this is more of an introduction into how you can start using auto layout in your application. Setting up the launcher screen will be done in a separate tutorial later. Let's set the screen size to 5.5 inches. It's up to you to decide whether to start with the smaller screen size or the larger ones. The launcher or the splash screen which we are going to lay out will look like the first screen. Let's capture the background color from the sketch design and set it to the view which we selected in Storyboard. There you go, background color of view is changed as per the design. Let's go back and slice those images from the design now. We could need the slices for different resolutions and Sketch is a great tool to do so. We need the slices in the following sizes, 1x, 2x and 3x. I normally like to follow some naming convention with underscore before exporting the slices. The exported files will have the same name of the slices with those of at the race x support added. Choose a folder where you want the slices to be exported.
this applies if you are using a tool like sketch Let's check whether the slices are exported in the expected format by going to the folder. There you have it. Slices with the same name format with X extension will be available there. Now let's add these assets to the image folder with the iOS project where you'll be, you'll be able to access the files. So this is the image assets folder. I'll be able to access the image as it's now in the storyboard once I have added it. I need to now have an image view added on which we will set the currently sliced image. The image looks collapsed, uh, so let's make it aspect fit based on the width and height of the image instead of the image view. That's sorted now. Let's make it as per the design now. As you can see, as per design, there is only a small margin between the left and the right side of the image. Let's do the same in our storyboard. Let's keep the width and height of the image same as the design. Now let's pick the other elements which should be, which should come at the bottom of the screen. Let's identify the font name, size and weight which needs to be applied. Let's add a couple of more uh, labels which will represent the power by details. Apply the font details which we captured from the design. Copy and paste the same label which we can reuse as it is not uh, added any outlets or action to it. So we are done with our powered by labels.
Now let's run the app and see how it looks in different devices. As we had done the design for iPhone 6s Plus, it will exactly look like the design even without applying any auto layout. Let's run the app in a different device other than what is being it is being designed. So in an iPhone 5s device, the layout looks broken simply because the screen design is static now. Let's enable auto layout and start applying the layout constraints. By default, you can see that the auto layout is enabled. All we need to do is start applying the constraints. Easiest way to apply constraint is to drag mouse by clicking on control button. A context menu will come up providing all the available constraints. So my first constraint is to make sure that the image at the center is horizontally and vertically centered to the view. If the constraints are all right, then the lines will be in blue. If there are some errors, then the line will turn red and provide you with suggestions. For the image, I want to make it aspect fit instead of setting static width and height. This will make sure that the image will fit within device resolutions. Now let's apply constraint to the bottom label which should always be at the bottom with the spacing. So I applied a vertical spacing constraint and I also kept the width as equal to the width of the label as I am pretty much sure it's not going to overflow in any other device resolutions. Also make sure that the labels are horizontally center aligned to the view. Both labels needs to have a vertical spacing constraints between each other. The constraint to that label still have some issues. Let's resolve that. So all the constraints related to the label looks all right right now. You can go to that particular tab and view all the constraints applied. Also, if you want to modify any constraint constant value, then you can do that there. All the constraints related to the view are shown now. If you want to see the specific constraints related to the UI view, then you have to simply select the control and constraints will appear. Let's run the app and see how the auto layout constraints have really helped us in handling the layouts. That's the iPhone 5s layout which now looks pretty decent compared to the earlier broken version. Let's also check whether the original design made for iPhone 6s Plus is broken now. Works like a charm.
now iPhone 6s no problems at all let's try in a pretty old device the iPhone 4s It does work well there too. And finally, let's try in an iPad device. Looks like it works in any device. So what does this mean? Auto layout has made sure that our layouts are future proof. It will work in any future devices.